The find was made slap bang in the middle of the town on its main shopping street. Behind a hoarding, workmen were doing exploratory work to find a foundation for a new building which would rise here. When they began turning up bits and pieces, which they immediately suspected would interest archaeologists. These included leatherwork and pottery, with bones and shells, which will indicate our forebears diet. What is found so far is of the medieval period, but it's strongly believed that Viking remains are just a few feet further down. Confirmation of the value of the site was given after local amateur archaeologists and then a board of works archaeologist were called in, and they regard the site as being very important, says the mayor of Wexford, Alderman Dominic Kiernan. Well, it has uh, great significance altogether. We've been trying to establish links. We have plenty of written uh, history of Wexford in the Viking times, but we're trying to uh, establish the direct links with the Viking times, and this is our great chance to do so. It'll have a ma uh, major significance in the tourist line uh, to come across such a, a great site and so, uh, so many artefacts. Like, uh, it's very, very exciting for Wexford. It's going to be a very, very exciting time. And what would you, now that you have it, so to speak, what do you intend doing with it? We intend to exploit it to, uh, to its fullest. We want to make sure that uh, it's not another wood key. Of the visible find to date, what excites them most is the post and wattle constructed house remains. But carrying out the necessary careful excavation and then possible development work to display the find, including the Viking elements to best advantage, would cost a lot of money. So will it ever be done? County Manager, Noel Dillon. Michael, the short answer is that it can't afford not to capitalise on them. I know when uh, Dr Brendan Swan came to me on New Year's Day uh, saying he felt that he may be onto something, uh, I was quite interested and, and, and supportive and that's the role I'm playing with uh, with Brendan and and with um, Coleman here and, and through the mayor and the corporation our view is we can't miss an opportunity of learning about our past if we do we shouldn't be around. Dr Brendan Swan explains that they are lucky in their find it's perfectly preserved in thick black mud the luck is in the fact that previous generations didn't decide to build a basement house here as they did elsewhere digging out and dumping hundreds of years of our history. Well, I think the, uh, the fact that we have the, discovered the post and wattle in situ, terribly well preserved. Uh, they say better than preserved than what was found in Waterford and Wood Quay. And the great depth that we found the organic material, it extends some six feet down. Now, we know from the pottery that we're into the 13th century, and we can positively identify the uh, post and wattle to the 13th century. Now, beneath that, we have uh, two more feet, which brings us possibly into the Viking era. This was the first piece of pottery that we found, uh, a decorated piece, which turned out to be uh, 13th century unglazed pottery. Uh, these pieces were found later. This is uh, what is known, this green pottery is what is known as ham green pottery from the Bristol area. Uh, this piece is very interesting. Uh, this is French and glazed on both sides. This piece here is a piece of native pottery. Uh, now, packed in all around are remains of bones and particularly leather. And the leather is in two uh, layers. What the significance of that is, I don't know. But the really remarkable thing about the site is the preservation of the posts and the timber. This is a piece of uh, silver birch. We can identify that. It's so well preserved. And this is a piece of oak which has been worked. Uh, the ads marks can be seen on it. This is a, a whetstone, it's been broken, but its function was to sharpen a knife like that. And it was found in association with pieces of leather. And it has been suggested to me that this was a cobbler's uh, whetstone. And this is the leather that was thrown away. Now the whole site is packed with little pieces of scrap leather like that. And why would it be the case that this is the first Viking find? I mean, it's known to be a Viking area, isn't it? It's known to be a Viking town, but our evidence for that is only literary. We have never found uh, uh, an artefact or comb or a bit of a hatchet or uh, uh, 
sword or anything like nothing like that had ever been found in Wexford. So we've no positive evidence, we've only the literary evidence. So is the significance of this find then that this would be the proof of Wexford Viking Path? It would, yes. Be positive proof that we could show something. And what, as an archaeologist, amateur archaeologist, what, what would you like to see happening either on the site or with the artefacts? Well, I'd like to see the ar I'd like to see it professionally excavated, and from what No Lillen has said, uh, it is going to be excavated. But uh, <coughs> the artefacts I would like kept in Wexford. I'm positive about that. I feel that too much has gone to Dublin, and we should have them here. And um, we have the Heritage Park here, just outside the town. Uh, they can possibly go there, but whereas we have made an artificial one out there, we have a real one here. <laughs>